Hey everybody, Omar here, the Knife Shark Guy, and I am back with another video for you. And as you can see, I've got another custom knife. So let's get right into this. So I already did the specs and the stats on this knife, and I want to talk about it. Um, as you guys know, and as I've spoken before, uh, I've got both my um, knives uh, at the uh, Epicurean Edge. Which is this store right here. There's a president. Uh, Daniel O'Malley. Uh, I got my knife there at the Epicurean Edge. Now, I want to do part two on this video because I kind of want to just talk about buying customs uh, overall. It's uh, because my experience is really nothing like the, like what it's supposed to be. Uh, and I've spoken about that in my last video where, you know, you you build a, you go on Instagram or Facebook and you, you hear about a a knife maker that you may have heard of or liked and then you build a relationship with that guy and then you ask him to build you a knife. I didn't want to go that route. Um, more than likely because, you know, it takes time to have a knife made for you. I mean, the process of actually getting a knife made for you um, is just really, it's it's supposed to be a whole, it's supposed to be a, a whole fun uh, experience. Um... But it doesn't always turn out that way. So I decided to go ahead and skip the middleman. Uh, plus, I don't know about you guys, but when it comes to buying knives over a certain price, I want to see the thing. It's just me. You know, I'm not going to go on a website and buy a custom knife I've never heard of, buy a guy i never heard of. There's got to be some people there that know about the guy, know about his work, um, you know, and people that you trust um, to purchase knives of this price. Um, now granted, you know, when I walked into the store, I didn't expect them to have a whole, uh, gigantic bunch of cabinet bowls of custom knives, but that's basically what they do. You know, they, uh, the custom knife makers, uh, like John Arnold, for example, who does not have a website, uh, he needs a place to show off his work. So he chooses the Epicurean Edge to do it for him. And in exchange, he gets to continue to keep sending them knives. And he will he can sell his knives there. At the same time, the Epicurean Edge gets a little uh, advertisement for them. Um, and as a result, the Epicurean Edge is the largest store uh, here in Washington where you can get uh, custom knives. And of course, if you don't live in Washington and you still want a custom knife and you want to go on my word as far as these people go at the Epicurean Edge. They are fantastic people. They're very, very nice. Uh, uh, very, very nice and friendly folks. Their website is bladegallery.com. You can check that out right there. And they have they, they have all the knives there that you can, all the custom knives that you can do that they have. And you got to keep in mind, uh, all the pieces there that are custom knives, including my piece, they're all one of a kind. So the designers will continue to keep making knives, but you're not going to be able to get the one that I have in my hand because I own this one made by John Arnold, and uh, he'll probably make other ones. Maybe yours might have pearl inlays, or you, you know you may have a a red backspace or something different on yours that's different on mine. It might even have a a flipper on it that's not a front flipper. I can't believe I can't do this now. So. There you go. Uh, yours might actually have a, a, a flipper on the back. Who knows what he might do to the other knife that's similar to this one. It might have a different custom pivot. And that's basically the whole idea behind getting a custom knife. Something that's completely different and one of a kind that you own. That's basically what you're, what you're paying for. And I gotta tell you guys, the concept behind getting a custom uh, knife, because the knife is made by one guy, one guy, you can tell from the way that the, this thing is made. I mean, look at look at that. Look at that. I mean, that is just absolutely I mean, ridiculous. Look, it's all by itself. Absolutely falling shut. This is a mechanical piece of art. This is a mechanical oil painting, basically. Everything has is, is been uh, handmade, with the exception, from what I understand, with the, with the exception of the, uh, the pocket clip and possibly the blade, everything else is handcrafted by, by John Arnold. All that attention, all the man hours it took to make this piece of art that's in my hand right now, that's what I paid for. Um, and you, when you use it, and I'm going to use this knife, believe it or not. It's not going to be a safe queen. When you use it, you can feel it. You can tell. You can see all the detail that went on it. Everything in this knife is very, very clean. There's no 
uh, you know, there's no rough edges. Everything is smooth. The centering, guys, come on, take a look at that. That's perfect centering. Uh, it's my friend Daniel, the president of uh, uh, at the Epicurean Edge. Uh, <laughs> I want to tell you, Daniel, centering matters to me, and it does matter to a lot of people. But you know, I'm going to applaud him for his for his uh, opinion on centering. He's probably right, but a lot of us like our knives the way we like them. And uh, you know, Daniel's a, Daniel's the kind of guy uh, who's not going to argue with a customer that's going to buy stuff from him. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway. Uh, one of the coolest things on this knife is that the uh, the backspacer glows in the dark. I'm not going to show you, but it's called a moon glow backspacer, so that's really kind of cool. Um, but the two reasons that I got this knife, and as you, you know uh, from my previous uh, video on the other knife that I bought, I'll bring that one out now since that one's done. Um, the mini Simba, done by also done by John Arnold. Um, the reason I got both these knives because I always wanted a front flipper. That was actually my main intention when I walked into the store. I just wanted a front flipper. I was looking for anything that was a front flipper. And uh, the guys at the store said, well, why don't you go take a look at some of the customs we have? And I was stupid enough to say, yeah, sure, I'll take a look at them. And then I walked away with two. So, uh, you know, am I going to be doing this a lot? No. Am I going to be going to a store quite a bit? Oh, yeah. Uh, as far as what I paid for these, I am not going to say. You want to find out what I paid for them, you can go online and look. Uh, go to thebladegallery.com and see. <laughs> there you go. There's perfect perfect uh, timing for you guys to maybe consider maybe ordering your own uh, custom knife. They do have layaway, by the way. Uh, it's online. You can check that out. Um but I didn't want to have it on layaway. I wanted to have it right away. So I got a I got I got my dangerous credit card out and I went a little nuts by getting two of these. Uh so these are my purchases. I'm very, very happy with them. Uh I am my plan is to am I gonna go completely custom? No. Uh am I gonna start buying customs? Yes. I'm gonna start buying them very slowly because these two are, you know, whew, I don't want to talk about it. Uh you know, I don't know how those other guys online, uh, you know, like Dr. Frunky and Epic Snuggle Bunny and all those guys that, you know, we follow uh, on Instagram and on YouTube, how those guys actually buy it. I don't know. Maybe they max out their credit cards. I have no idea. Maybe some of them are actually rich, you know. Uh, but if you're to ask me, if you're just an average Joe like me and you like, the, you like knives and you feel you're ready to move on to the next step, uh, I would definitely consider, yeah, maybe buying a couple or at least maybe buy one custom knife. Um, it's not, believe me, it's not even going to be too hard for you to say that you, uh, you know, you won't even have that hard of a time uh, getting it. It's, it's not going to be too hard of a purchase to just hand over the credit card because, I mean, if you see artwork like this that does this, I mean, I don't think I have. Uh, I don't think I could just walk away and not at least buy one of them. Um, so, you know, the uh, the experience has been fun. Like I said, this is not the normal route for buying customs. If you want to go the normal route, you're certainly welcome to. Uh, I'm a very impatient guy. I like to cut out the middle guy and just get a custom. Uh, so that's basically what I did. Uh, I guess you could call it custom buying cheating. Uh, and as you know, they, they do come with their own uh, certificates of authenticity. There they are right there. Uh, and you also get uh, uh, a case with it for free. Uh, comes with the knife. But this is basically how they're packaged because they don't have boxes, right? right? And both cards are signed by the designer. As you can see, it's like on the Chris Reeve. Uh, you get a card that says what the... Like, this is basically its birth card. Um, now, the thing about uh, the custom knives in this shop, and the thing about custom knives is that you're trying to get the custom knife maker who's on the rise. Now, in this case, uh, John Arnold is not exactly an on-the-rise uh, knife maker per se. In other words, that's not his purpose for making the knives is to be well known as a knife maker. He's already had a career, John Arnold. He is a retired South African architect. So he's a different type of an artist. Uh, he's not looking to build fame or fortune or anything making these things. He makes these things because he loves them. Uh, and he loves making them. And he loves doing them part-time. And, and he loves the idea of, you know, 
probably what most knife makers like to do is they let this kind of sit, sit alone, whittle away, and create a piece of art like this uh, and share it with the world. And I, I think that's pretty much what someone like John Arnold's into, especially when you're, you know, someone who's retired in a different position in life. You're looking for your next adventure. And for him, you know, building custom knives on the side is what, you know, gives him joy. And um, what gives me joy is the fact that I own two of his knives. Now, they do have other... Uh, knife makers there. Most of the custom knife makers uh, are actually from South Africa simply because there's actually a following for uh, custom knife makers in South Africa. Um, you know, there's also other places, obviously, there, you know, Japan and other, com and other countries, but South Africa is where you're going to find some of the most unique work. I mean, you're just not going to find and boing your burl uh, inlay on a knife here in America or marble carbon fiber. I mean, these are, these are materials that are simply uh, top-notch, elegant, but I don't think you'd be able to find them here in the United States. They just don't have that, uh, have the materials here, um, you know. Uh, like I said, everything on this knife was made by hand, uh, including possibly the blades were done by machine, I'm guessing. Uh, I'd probably have to ask Daniel at the Epicurean Edge uh, on that. Uh, but yeah, so this is my, my look at my first two custom knives that I've ever bought. Uh, I'm probably going to get two more in August on my birthday. God, uh, God helping, I would have paid these two knives off already. I'm hoping I will. That's my goal anyway. Um, and I'd like to get two more customs. Uh, I'm looking to get two more customs by another custom knife maker named Kurt Keith Kruger. Um, and quite possibly another one by uh, Willem Steenkamp, who's uh, kind of caught my eye. Uh, when you're buying custom knives, I think the main thing is what appeals to you by the eye, because it's a lot of eye candy you're looking at here. That's the other thing, you know, as opposed to, say, a production folder where you've got certain things in your mind already by what you're going to purchase. Is the knife smooth? You know, is it got nice tight tolerances? Is it, you know, solid? You know what, honestly, in custom knives, they're already there. All those basics are there. Um, you know, price point, rule of thumb. If the knife costs roughly about 240 bucks, 250 bucks, the tight tolerance is the finish, fit and finish, and the smoothness and all that stuff that we like in a knife is already there from $250 on up. After that, if a knife goes up in price, it's probably because of the details. Maybe it's got carbon fiber on it. Maybe it's got some kind of funky cool backspacer on it. Maybe the screws are diamond or whatever the details might be. That's where the price point starts to go up. Um, so keep that in mind also when you buy, uh, when you're looking possibly getting customs. Uh, again, what I say is not rule of thumb. What I say is based on my own experience and I've had a lot of fun buying, um, buying my first two customs. Again, uh, through the Epicurean Edge. I really can't talk about these guys enough because if it wasn't for these guys, I never would have bought these two customs. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, I never would have bought my very first Sebenza. This never would have happened either. I would still be buying regular production knives. So I guess what I'm saying in this video is that it depends on access for me. Probably does for you too. I mean, once a knife hits a certain price point, I want to know, I want to see, I want to feel what it is that I'm buying. And if I can't do that, chances are I'll be hesitating, you know, until I'm dead and I'll never get a Sebenza or I'll never get a, a custom piece. I'll never get any of these things. And, you know, a lot of you guys are probably like that as well. I'm, I'm pretty sure that there's probably a custom store uh, or a custom knife store near you. Google it. Find out where you live. Find out where they have them. Uh, because I'm pretty sure there are some stores here in the United States that, that sell, you know, pieces like this where, you, you know, you cut out having to, to, you know, start a relationship with the custom knife maker and all that, if you're not interested in doing that, which are, clearly I wasn't. Um, you know, I may do that in the future for my next piece. I don't know. Uh, but for now, this is where I'm at. So, anyway, uh, this is Omar signing off. Let me just put this one away. Uh, once again, signing off on my... Grizzly Tactical Interframe Front Flipper with G10 and M. Boynia Burl running on our KBS system with M390 steel, in case I forgot to mention that. Um, 
if you can see also, I forgot to mention, you don't see any other markings on the knife, like on a ZT, where the marking is on the pocket clip, and it's on the back of the knife, and it's on the front of the knife. Here you just see the stamped maker's mark, and that's it. Everything else is clean on there. So that's another attractive feature of owning a custom piece. So there you go. This is Omar signing off with his first two custom uh, pieces. You saw this one in the other video. This is part two of uh, this video. The, st the specs and the stats and everything on this knife was done in part one. You can check that uh, on online. I just uploaded that. Uh, and again, if you like what you see uh, and you like what I do, again, click on the shark on the uh, right-hand side over there. And uh, please click like and subscribe and share. And please leave comments. I want to hear uh, what you think about these two custom knives. I want to hear your comments. If you're planning on getting customs or you're planning on uh, doing the custom thing, uh, leave some comments for any questions for me. Uh, whatever you have. Keep in mind, I'm just a regular guy like you guys that got into knives and just completely lost it uh, by getting his first two customs. And if you want to find out how to lose it yourself, come talk to me and uh, I'll hook you up. <laughs> Uh, so this is no more than I'm Shark Guy signing off, hoping you'll find happiness, and in this case, in your real piece of mechanical oil painting uh, sharp art. And once again, before I close, how about another shot and how the smoothness, which is so freaking ridiculous on this piece, and the other piece as well. I have never felt, God, I'm like dying right there. There you go. Uh... So my two first custom pieces by John Arnold. This is Omar signing off, hoping you'll find happiness in your next piece of Sharp Art.